Welcome to August Lico Challenge. Today's problem is Pascal's Triangle 2. Given the non-negative index k, return the kth index of a Pascal's Triangle. Pascal's Triangle is represented nicely in this graphic, where every row has one more cell than its previous row, and the numbers within are going to be the summation of the two cells above it. Notice how all the cells on the borders are always going to be 1, so it's only the ones in the middle that we need to calculate. So let's think about how we could represent this in a programming language like Python. And we'll probably use a list of lists. If we went straight forward, we could think of what we would need to do to calculate the last row. Here, this will be the row of three. And whatever row we want to move forward, we need to calculate the ones before that iteratively in order to get the next row and the next row and so on and so forth. So just like the graphic indicates, all we care about is the ones in the middle, right? And we need to add up the two on top. So if we represent like this, like we can see that visually, but how about, what would that look like in, uh, in a programming language? To make it easier, try to, instead of making it a triangle, just look at it like, like this. Um, I guess it's still a right triangle, but you can see all we care about is the numbers in the middle, right? We see that the one row before it, we just want to add up the in same index number as well as the index number before it here. So 2 is going to be um, the sum of the previous row, same index, as well as the index minus 1. Here in 3, we can see that we need to add up 1 and 2. 3 is going to be added up 2 and 1. And everything else at the edges, we don't care about. Those are always going to be 1s. So our approach then would be to uh, go through each row, create a temporary array, and calculate the ones in the middle, and then add that to our output and continue this loop until we are finished and then return the last list in that array. All right, so let's see what that might look like. So first things first, uh, we want to start off with, I'm going to call it pass. This is going to be our Pascal's triangle. And since we know the very top row is going to have just a, a 1, we can just begin with that. Now, we want to do this for however many rows that we're given. So 4i in range of row index. And we're going to have to do a plus 1 uh, because this is 0 indexed. And we want to start at the second row, which is going to be 1 here, because we already have row 0. That's already got a 1. So the first thing we want to do is start off by initializing our temporary array. And we'll just say, make this a list of 1s for uh, in range of, of what? Um, I guess it would be in range of um, the the row index that we're on, right? Row index that we're on plus one. Range of plus and ones, so plus one. Yes, all right, so after that, we now we know that it's gonna be like one, one at this point. And we'll say this isn't a very good example because we want to save it's like the third, second, third row here. We only want to care about the one in the middle, right? So what we'll do is since the ones at the edges are already ones, we'll just say for uh, j in range of 1 to the length of our temporary array minus 1. So that way we're only going to care about the ones in the middle. And at that point, we're just going to make our temporary uh, index array, the index point, equal to our Pascal's triangle, whatever the previous row is, the last row that we've added on. Um, as well as j plus pascals minus 1, uh, j minus 1. So that's going to equal 2 on top of here. So once we're finished with the census updates to 2, now we could just add that to our pascals triangle. We'll append our pascals triangle with temporary array, and then just continue the loop. After we're finished with that, let me just delete that here, and uh, we will return our the last list on our Pascal's triangle. So let's see if I've messed anything up. 
Certainly might have. Okay, looks like it's right. Let's go and submit that. And there we go, accepted. Okay, so this works, but they have a follow-up. Can you optimize our array to only use k extra space? So basically just a list with k indexes indicating like our last row. Hmm, so that's a little complicated, right? Because don't we need to have our previous rows to calculate the next row? This is like a dynamic programming solution, right? But if you think about it carefully, let's just think about that last row here with one, two, one. We want to get to one, three, three, one, right? Could we use this array to get to this array doing the exact same thing that we're doing here? Well, uh, the problem is uh, first we might want to append a cell, right? So we'll say that we add one here at the very end. Now we just care about the ones in the middle. So how about we just add up the ones from before and get that three. But if we do it left to right, you can see immediately we update this. So now this one doesn't work because we've changed this. We need that two. But what about the other way? Well, because this one is new and uh, that's never going to change, you can see that here, if we just add the previous one, we're kind of going, uh, I guess, bottom up. We'll add two to our one here, that's three, but we'll be keeping this two and add, keep bringing the one here. And now we've gotten to this point. And this is still using uh, the, the same list, we just appended one, and that's going to allow us to only use k extra space. So the algorithm is still the same. All it is is we're going to get rid of our temporary array that we're creating and instead use the same list. Okay, so start with initializing our output. It's not going to be a list of lists. It's just going to be a list. And we'll still go through this same thing. But instead of creating this temporary array, what we'll do is append to our output one. And the same thing here, this would be the same except we want to move backwards, right? So how will we do that? Um, length of output minus one, but we want to go minus two because uh, we don't care about the very last one. We're going to go to not negative one, we're going to go to zero, and we'll still decrease by negative one. Finally, instead of having our temporary list, we will uh, say output just add the one previous to it. So plus equal output of j minus one. We don't need to append anything now. All we need to do is return the output at the very end. Okay, so let's see if that works. Okay, it looks like it worked. Let's go ahead and submit that. And there we go. So the time complexity is the same and we are only using k space. So that's it. Uh, Pascal's triangle is a good one. I would definitely look into it and solve variations of this problem. Thanks for watching my channel and remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.